whether you're up studying late or tomorrow morning, uh, whatever your situation, I'm here with you. Let's see if we can figure a few things out. Now, I've got two different representations of a redox reaction. Um, one is called line notation, which I presented in class. And line notation has an advantage in that it's particularly dense notation. All that means is that there's a lot of information. We know that if we're looking at the anode compartment, that we're looking at the oxidation half reaction. So oxidation is depicted in line notation in the anode compartment. And physically, if we're talking about a battery, and a battery is nothing more than two separated compartments, there's something called a salt bridge that, oops, salt bridge that joins the two sides of the battery. And then we have an electrode. This is beautiful. Uh, my artwork is stunning, okay? And there's something up here and some device, maybe it's a light bulb that we're going to run, something like that. Maybe it's a volt -ohm meter. And so in the anode compartment, we'll call this the anode compartment, that's where oxidation takes place. Over here, this is the cathode compartment. And the cathode compartment is where reduction takes place. Uh, this is the salt bridge, or it's my poor attempt at a salt bridge. Uh, these are the electrodes. This is the anode electrode, this is the cathode electrode, and this is where oxidation takes place, this is where reduction takes place. All right, so here's back to our line notation. This is the representation of the salt bridge. That's that double line right there. This is a phase change. Now, in this particular redox reaction, uh, we have inert electrodes. These platinum electrodes don't participate in the reaction. Their, their job is just to conduct electrons. That's all their job is. Over here in the cathode compartment, that's where reduction takes place. Now, I have another depiction of this reaction, and that is in the half reactions. I have two reduction half reactions from the tables. And if we look at the reduction potentials, we see that we have a 1.51 standard reduction potential from the table. Uh, and then we have a 1.23 standard reduction potential. And that corresponds to perchlorate being reduced to chlorate. Since the perchlorate being reduced to perchlorate has the lower standard reduction potential, we know that that is where the oxidation will take place. Since the uh, reduction of permanganate to manganese 2 plus ion has the higher reduction potential, we know that wants to be reduced more, so that's going to be the reduction potential. And that corresponds perfectly to what we see in our line notation. Our line notation, cathode, is where the reduction takes place. That's going to be the permanganate being reduced to manganese 2 plus. The uh, oxidation takes place in the anode compartment, and that's where chlorate is going to be oxidized to perchlorate. So this entire reaction has to be reversed in order to depict the oxidation half reactions. And if the reaction has to be reversed, then this sign has to be converted to a negative sign before we calculate E of the cell. So let's go ahead and let's reverse those two reactions. Like I said, this is unedited, so it's a little bit sloppy. Uh, we're going to move this down. We're going to focus now just on the half reactions. So the uh, reduction half reaction is the top reaction. It gets written as is. And let me say that reduction, uh, that all these standard reduction potentials from the tables are written as balanced half reactions. So at 8 plus, plus 5 electrons, and that's going to be uh, reduced to Mn2 plus, plus 4 waters, 4 H2Os. 
and that's going to have a standard reduction potential of 1.51 volts just as it's written. The oxidation half reaction has to be reversed. So we take this entire reaction and we flip it around and so now it's going to be ClO3 minus uh, plus H2O and then that's going to be uh, oxidized to ClO4 minus. You can tell it's being oxidized uh, because we're going from three oxygens to four oxygens on the product side. More oxygen, more oxidation, more oxidized. And then we're also going to have plus two hydrogen ions and plus two electrons. Now, immediately, without doing anything else, I know how many electrons are being transferred in this reaction without going any further, without balancing the reaction. Because if I look, two electrons are being lost by chlorate, five electrons are being gained by permanganate, so I know that the total electron transfer has to be the multiplier of the two. Two times five is ten, five times two is ten, and so n, the n value, is equal to 10 electrons. I didn't have to do anything else to determine that, but we're going to go a little bit further. Uh, by the way, if you want to know how to calculate oxidation states, let's just go ahead and do that just as an exercise. Oxygen is the more electronegative. It gets its charge, which is minus 2 in ionic compounds. 4 times the minus 2 is minus 8. The overall charge on the permanganate ion is minus 1 which means that this has to be a plus 7 oxidation state. Since we're going from plus 7 to plus 2, we can see that we're gaining 5 negative charges to reduce our plus 7 to a plus 2 charge. Over here, we've got a chlorate ion, 3 times a minus 2, oxygen gets its charge, is minus 6. The overall charge is negative 1, so we know this has to be plus 5, so the oxidation state in chlorate is plus 5. Over here in perchlorate, sorry about that, I made a mess of it, uh, oxygen still gets its charge. 4 times a minus 2 is minus 8. The overall charge on the ion is minus 1, so this has to be plus 7. So we know that chlorine has a plus 7 in perchlorate. It's more oxidized, so that makes sense. It's lost more electrons, and every time you, get, you gain one more oxygen, you increase the oxidation state by plus 2. So we're going from plus 5 to plus 7, which means that two electrons are being lost in this reaction. Now, to balance this reaction, I need to make the number of electrons equal to each other. And since the least common multiple for these guys is going to be 2 for this guy, this is going to be times 2, uh, and 2 times 8 is going to be 16 H pluses. 2 times 5 is going to be 10 electrons. 2 times manganate, sorry, manganese plus 2 ion, and then 2 times 4 will be 8 waters. Uh, correspondingly, I multiply this by 5. I'm trying to get the number of electrons equal to each other, and I have to multiply everything. I can't just multiply the electrons, so that'll give me five waters, five perchlorate ions, five times two is ten hydrogen ions, and five times two is ten electrons. All right, so now I've got my electrons balanced. And what I need to do is go ahead and cancel the electrons. I've already made note that N is equal to 10 electrons. Uh, so let's cancel the 10 electrons. See if there's anything else we can cancel. I've got 8 waters on the product side over here. I've got 5 waters over here, so I can cancel those 5 waters. And I can cancel 5 of these 8 which gives me three H2Os left. I'll just make a note of that. Hydrogens. I've got 10 hydrogens on the product side of my oxidation reaction, 16 hydrogens 
on the reduction side of my reaction so I can cancel all 10 of those hydrogen ions and get rid of 10 of these so that'll give me six hydrogen ions. I don't think there's anything else I can cancel so I'm ready to add the two reactions. And if I add those two reactions, what do I get now? I've got two permanganate, MnO4 minus plus five uh, chlorate, ClO3 minus, let's see, do I have anything left? Yeah, I've got plus six hydrogens. Let's be careful here. Getting kind of careless, kind of late. I'm kind of tired. You should probably be in bed, but I'm not. So what can I say? Uh, so I think that's uh, that's where we are. Let's go ahead. I've got five perchlorate ions left. Uh, let's see. Three waters. Let's see. I see those three waters up there. Three H2O plus what else I got left? Uh, there's something, oh yeah, two manganese, two plus ions. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, let's make sure. I've got two manganese on the reactant side and two manganese on the product side. I've got, let's say, uh, five chlorines on the reactant side, five chlorines on the product side. So far, so good. I've got six hydrogens on the reactant side, and three times two is six hydrogens on the product side. Let's check out oxygen. Always a scary bit. Two times four is eight oxygens, plus five times three is 15 oxygen. Anybody want to tell me what 15 plus eight is? Uh, 15 plus 8, isn't it? 23. Let's try this. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 times 1, that's 3, 23 oxygens. So all the mass is balanced. Now all we have to do is make sure charge is balanced. I've got 2 times a minus 1 charge, plus 5 times a minus 1, that's a minus 7, plus a 6 times plus charge. So 6 plus plus a 7 minus gives me an excess minus 1 charge on the reactant side. Over here, I have 5 times a minus 1 charge, that's 5 minus, plus 2 times a 2 plus, that's a 4 plus, 4 plus and 5 minus, a minus 1 charge. Oh my God, we are balanced. Our reaction is balanced. We have the reduction of, of permanganate, a manganese and permanganate from plus 7, to plus 2, and the oxidation of chlorine from plus, uh, plus 5 to plus 7. And everything is balanced. All right, so let's calculate the E of the cell. So E of the cell, under standard conditions, is equal to E of reduction plus E of oxidation. Now, we know what the E of reduction is. It's one point. 5, 1 volts. We know what the E of oxidation is. The E of oxidation is not positive 1.23 because remember we flipped this reaction so it's negative 1.23. So that's going to be a negative, we're adding a negative 1.23 volts. And when we calculate that, I believe we come out with 0.28 volts it's a positive E of the cell, so we know the reaction is spontaneous. Let's see, what else do we know? If we know the reaction is spontaneous, we also know that delta, damn it, delta G is equal to a number that is a negative value. So we're going to go ahead and calculate that. We're going to calculate a couple of things, all right? So, uh, since we know all of this, we can use some of the equations that we know. For instance, since this is the standard cell potential, we can calculate delta G naught using uh, minus NFE 
of the cell under standard conditions. And what's E of the cell under stand con standard conditions? It's 0.28 volts. So delta G will equal, on uh, delta G naught rather, will equal minus the number of electrons transferred, which is 10 moles of electrons transferred. And that's going to equal times Faraday's constant, which I'll give to you on the, uh, which I'll give to you on the, uh, on the front cover of the exam. I've told you that. And that's 96,485. And in this case, we're calculating delta G, so it's going to be joules per moles, per moles times volts times E of the cell, which is 0.28 volts. If I do my cancellation, moles of electrons cancel, uh, volts cancels, and I'm going to get a nice negative delta G. I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. And so that's minus 10 electrons times 96485 times 0.28. And that gives me minus 270,158. 270,158 joules for my delta G naught. I need to go ahead and divide that by 1,000 joules per kilojoule. And when I do that, that's going to give me a minus 270 kilojoules for my delta G naught. So that could be the answer to my problem, but I want to go one step further. I want to calculate the equilibrium constant for this particular reaction. Minus 270 kilojoules. That's a pretty good uh, delta G naught. Uh, and I also am moving 10 electrons. So I suspect this is a pretty spontaneous reaction. So using the equation, delta G naught is equal to minus RT natural log K. I can go ahead and solve for the equilibrium constant K. I'm going to divide this side by minus RT. Divide this by minus RT. That's going to give me the natural log of K is equal to minus delta G naught divided by RT. And I'll take the E of that to get rid of the natural log. And I have to take the E of both sides. That gives me K is equal to E to the minus delta G naught divided by RT, an equation that you should know for exam four and the final exam. So let's go ahead and calculate this value. If I take E to the minus minus uh, 270 kilojoules, and then I divide that by RT, so that's going to be, and I have to convert the gas constant to kilojoules, so that would be 0 0.008. 314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin times 298. That's the standard temperature. I wind up with E to the 109 power. Oh my gosh, this is going to be monstrous. I wind up with a K that's equal to, let's see, a K that's equal to 2.5. 3 times 10 to the 47. Unbelievable. That is a hugely product, time to go to bed, product favored reaction. That's a hugely spontaneous reaction at 2.3 times 10 to the 47. Okay, guys, that's all for me. Hope that it helped.